Welcome back to my noisy lab folks. So what I've got here is a Fernisi DSO TC4. Now this was sent in to my channel from Fernisi, so thank you Fernisi. I love getting new things to play around with. And this is one of their, their newer devices. So let's have a let's have a look at it. But here it is, it's a pretty handsome device, I think. Let's check it out. Let's okay, let's get all the stuff out of the box here and get rid of the box. Comes with a manual in English and Chinese, it looks like. And it comes with a bag of probes and wires, some little probing accessories. These ones are really nice here, these little yellow ones with the teeth horns on them for getting on icy legs. It's got some of these little clips here, and they're they're better than average. They come with um, component testers. It's got a 100 megahertz scope probe. USB-C for charging, alligator clip lead, and uh, some more accessories for the scope. So that's that's what it comes with. And what it is, it's got a component tester, it's got an oscilloscope, it's got a function generator, and I believe it can uh, measure some other things as well. So the toolbox here, the oscilloscope, the signal generator, and the transistor tester. I'll leave a link to the manual down in the description. Uh, so you guys can have a look at it, see if it suits your needs. But these things, I like these multifunction devices. I mean, these are great for, for people to learn electronics. Let me see, what is the specification on the uh, scope? Analog bandwidth, 10 megahertz. So we're going to check that. And, uh, well, let's, uh, let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks like it's in Chinese. Maybe we better go over here. English. I needed to plug this into this power pack here because the battery is very low. It's nice that you can operate it while it's charging. That's a, an excellent feature. All right, so let's get to testing out this component checker here. And I'm going to start off with this. Now this is a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. I checked it out. The RDS is 3 ohms and the VT, the gate threshold is 2.2. All right, so it got a V threshold of 2.2, which is right on the money, and an RDS of 2.8 ohms. That's that's pretty good. All right, let's go now to a, an N channel. All right. The N channel I measured at a V threshold of 2.6, and we got 2.5, and an RDS of 1.7, and we're right on the RDS. Perfect. Okay, this is a PNP transistor. I checked this PNP transistor with a, an HFE of 308 and a forward voltage of 679 millivolts. So let's see what this tester says about it. HFE of uh, 310 and VBE of 681. Wow. Uh, here's an NPN transistor. This tested out at, with a VBE of 651 and an HFE of 335. Let's see. Three four seven versus three three five, and six four seven versus six five one. Beautiful. Okay. Now some of these, like this, this has got the orientation right. I got the emitter in one, base and collector. Let's see. Some of these uh, devices have a problem if you switch them around and they don't get it right. So let's see if this one does. So we should get the collector on one, base is still on two, and emitter on three. And that's exactly what we get. So let's try it with some capacitance here. Now this is a little uh, electrolytic here. I measured this at 10.3 microfarads, uh, V loss of 2.9% and an ESR of three ohms. Let's see what we get. Okay, took a little while. Um, 10.8 UF, so close there. V loss of 1%. It's showing a, a lot lower V loss than I measured before. ESR of 2.43 ohms versus 3 ohms. So it's right there, it's right in the ballpark. Let's um, try this little capacitor here. It's marked as a 10 nanofarad. We'll see what it comes up as. I measured it as 9.4 nanofarad before. 
9.44 right on as a little coil here which I measured at 23.5 micro Henry and 1 ohm Okay, you got it right. It says it's an inductance, uh, 21.8 micro Henry, which is pretty close, and 1 ohm, which is right on. This uh, resistor, let's check that out. 10.24K. Pretty close to the percentage value of the resistor. Now this uh, diode here, it's just a little silicone diode. I measured the forward voltage on this 0.695. Okay, it's got the orientation right, and it's got a forward voltage of 0.695, right on. Now here is a Zener diode. I think uh, in order to get uh, the Zener diode, we have to go to the toolbox. And uh, while we're in there, we'll see what else is in the toolbox. So we've got voltage test, the on-off test, which I don't know what the on-off test is. Zener diode check, it'll check out DS18V20 um, temperature sensors, DHT11 humidity and temperature sensors, and IR decoding. We'll do the Zener diode first, and then we'll just pop back and do these other things. So we've got to get this down here into KA, one of these places down here, and we'll bring this down to the Zener diode check. And I tested this at 8.3 volts, 8.24. Very nice. Let's try this uh, voltage check up here. So go back up here and I believe in 0 to 40. So we'll put this lead in here. Now check out this battery, which I think is, is dying. I think it's around about 7 volts or something like that. I haven't checked it yet, but I will in a second. 7.7 7 volts. Okay, now if I check that out with my big fluke here. 7.7207, so yeah, it's right on. All right, and I will check that, I don't know, the on-off test. Uh, does it do anything if I short it out? No, it's, no idea what that does. Okay, I don't have a DS18B20, I do not have a DHT11, but I do have a little remote control here. So we'll point that at it. Yeah, that works. Here's the user code that identifies the transmitter and then the data code. So this uh, is not going to change the user code or shouldn't. So it should always come up 02FF. But as I press different buttons, the data should change. And it does. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay. All that checks out. So let's try out the oscilloscope. They give you this handy dandy little uh, BNC adapter here. So let me put that into DSO here. And let me get a 50 ohm load and I'm going to bring down a feed from my waveform generator and we'll test this out, see if it gets up to 10 megahertz. Okay, I'm feeding it now with uh, one kilohertz and 2.5 volts peak to peak. So let's have a look at that. And press auto set up here. See if you can handle this. Sorry, I pressed the modulation button. My bad. All right, um, it was able to track it though. That's nice. Now we just see what our controls are. So we should be in vertical and horizontal mode here. And uh, what we got here, do you voltage peak to peak 2.52, which is exactly what I'm setting out to it. That's that's perfect. And the frequency is is right on there. It's bouncing around just a tiny bit. Let's go in here. Now here we can change the, the point at which the zero line is, the baseline. And we can change the horizontal trigger position. And I get now if we press this again, we're still going to be able to change the horizontal trigger position, but now we can change the vertical trigger position and press it again you'd be back to vertical and horizontal control okay now to get into the menu for the oscilloscope itself you long press the mode button and that allow you to set up the coupling AC DC probe one times ten times mode uh, this is the um, trigger mode normal auto or single and whether or not you want it on a rising or falling edge. And then we can get uh, over here and we can 
select all the parameters that we want tested. So right now we have frequency, duty cycle, and volts peak to peak. Over here you can select averaging. I've seen other people refer to it as persistence, but it's not. So you can either have it off or you can average over 500 milliseconds or one second or over infinity. And over here is for uh, looking at the images that you've saved. It's another long press and we'll come back. Let's go up uh, here to one megahertz. So we're still at 2.5 volts peak to peak. So what we're looking for is for it to not drop below 1.77 volts peak to peak. So let's uh, let's go up to one megahertz here. Okay, we're at one megahertz. We're still at 2.57 volts. Let's go up to five megahertz. And we're at 2.4 volts still. Everything is uh, keeping up. Let's go eight megahertz. Still at 2.1 volts. It is bouncing a little bit there. So let's try the 10 megahertz. Okay, seems to be a bit happier, 10 megahertz, and we're still at two volts. It definitely has an, an analog bandwidth of 10 megahertz. All right, so the, the oscilloscope checks out. Let's check out the generator. Now, one thing about the generator is it's not able to run the generator over one kilohertz while the scope is active. Now, I'm gonna put a, I'll put an oscilloscope up there and uh, let's have a, let's go in there. So, okay. So we've got, uh, we've got three volts coming out of it and one kilohertz. We can see if you look at the scope here that it's uh, everything is zero or above. So it's offset, basically it's offset above the uh, zero line and it doesn't go below zero. My guess is if you wanted to inject a signal into something and you needed a full AC signal, you just put a capacitor in line with the clips and you'd be fine. I also noticed the waveform has got a lot of steps in it, but that's okay for a tool like this. It's a, just a beginner's tool or auxiliary tool. That's, that's just fine. There's a little bit of noise on it as well. And I don't find that objectionable either. And that uh, you could be picking that up from the lab actually. Now let's have a look at the different waveforms here. We've got uh, square wave, triangle, half wave, full wave, stair step, stair step down, exponential up, exponential down, DC volts, a kind of a multi-frequency thing here, sync pulse, LRNs, and back to the sine wave. Okay, it's supposed to be able to go up to 50 kilohertz, so let's see if we can get that up to 50 kilohertz and see what that looks like. It actually looks a little bit nicer at this frequency. What does the square wave look like at this frequency? It looks pretty decent. You got a little bit of noise on the top of the signal. Picking that up from my environment here. Let me bring down the frequency a bit first. Let's go over to duty cycle. I go down and change the duty cycle. That's doing what it's supposed to do too. Let's back out of here. We'll try some different voltage levels. Okay, so here we go. Two volts, one volt, 0.5 volts. Let's talk about some of the other features. Right now, uh, it's got a very nice bail on it, like this, um, and it's got these little, nice little, nice touches, these little silicone feet. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna move around on you. I like that. It's a handy size. Overall, I'm quite impressed with it. But the one thing I say I don't like about it is this little connector here. If it's on here like this, if this that's a pretty big lever. You have to be very, very careful with it and make sure that you don't, don't put any force on it while you're using it. That'd be my only real concern. Uh, other than that, I think it I think it hits the mark. So let's uh, sum up a little bit. The component checker very closely matches some very expensive instruments I use to test out those components. Thumbs up on that. The oscilloscope, it, it does what it says it does. It's got all the basic functions that you need, and it indeed will go up to 10 megahertz. It will read the voltages and the frequencies accurately. Generator is basic, it'll do the job. If you need a signal to pump into something, then it'll do it. Uh, one drawback there is that if you want to use this generator to put a signal into something, then they'll use the scope to look at that signal coming out of it, you're limited to one kilohertz. That's a drawback there. 
But still, for learning electronics, that's all you really need. And then the other functions that we saw in the toolbox there, they're great. Uh, you can measure voltages, you can measure zener diodes, you can check out a few other more complex components like remote controls and humidity testers and temperature testers. It's got all the basic functions you need. I'm going to keep this around. I'm going to use it as an auxiliary instrument. It'd be great to keep on hand just even for the component checker because that's a really good component checker. Probably one of the most accurate I've come across. So a big thumbs up on this for Nisi. And thanks again for Nisi for sending it out to me to check it. I just love getting new stuff to play around with. All right, folks. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you in the next one.